Okay, there goes another half hour. I think this picks up, and again, there's only 12 verses, so we're going to get it on this one. I think it's six. Could be seven. I've lost track. When I download it to my computer, it'll break it down. It, it, there'll be a uh, video. Uh, there'll be six or seven of them, uh, broken down by half hours. Every time it goes off like that, uh, on this new card, it's uh, 29.59 minutes, you know, 30 minutes each. So I had to say part one. And I created a video using, you know, the first one, and then I created a video. The bad thing is they take forever. I had four, four parts of chapter 21 yesterday at 9 o'clock when I got them all I created a video from all four. I was going to do four at one time. It took 12 hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> some were faster than others. I'm going to try it again tonight with these, this tape. Uh, but I'm only going to do one at a time. They usually take about two hours. They might start out saying it's two hours and 45 minutes, but it ends up being about two hours. And now, with four, that would have been only eight hours in, instead of 12. Or 11 and a half, actually, is what it was. So I'm going to try that uh, with this tape. Uh, but we'll, surely we'll be able to finish up. That if he made himself an offering for guilt, it is an offer. An offering of one's self and soul to God for the guilt of sinning of the Jewish people the witnesses in return for possibly seeing his children and having long life as a covenant. Again, important to me. I didn't forget that they told me I was going to die and I didn't, for, you know, I didn't know and didn't expect the cancer to be removed. I just assumed it was there and I, I didn't think about it much. That it wasn't active or cancer of the lungs is not going to kill me. I, I don't know if it was denial, but uh, there must have been some denial in it. The offering is only a test of his devotion to God, as was the binding of Isaac. It's the same type of thing. Will you trust God to give you long life? A life that you were told was going to be terminated soon. By going through his fire of refinement, which he never really explained to me. He just said there's going to be a lot of pain involved. I said, I said hey, pain is my name. <laughs> I've been going through it my whole life. Little did I know. Yeah, I knew pain throughout my life. But when after God spoke to me, things got worse. Some of the things, no low he won't stick to to elicit emotions from me to remove me. And he, it's worked. I don't know why he's still doing this. He says, about, he says it's fine, Tony. Yeah. I said, just seal it all. He, he told me he's going to put his power on it and make sure as I get back into the world and, you know, I'm not dealing with just him and the, uh, uh, the angel of his presence that uh, the Holy Spirit who is a person, okay? Holy, holy. He, he says, I got to have two holies when I'm around Keith because he's a human being and I'm an angel. Yeah, I just what I had to call him 15, 16 years ago. I, I got a nickname for him now, which I'm not allowed to tell you. Uh, holy Spirit person, holy. That, yeah, holy. And that's why it says two holies. The holy at the beginning and holy at the end. And the word person. That's for the Jewish people. Yeah, but he's right beside me. He knows I'm talking to him. At least we're the person holy. Yes, Keith? See, he'll answer. Now, angel of his presence. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, holy spirit person holy. With the test of devotion, when it is set before him, 
is set before the righteous servant Moshe, the new covenant has already arrived. That's why in Malachi 3, God says, the angel of the covenant you desire, sin forgiveness in Jeremiah 31, is already on the way. It's for this. And it's more applicable to Jesus if you try to put him in there. Presumably he had gone through a test. It's not in the Gospels, of course. Um, and they don't think he was just a regular man like me. That man, and he called his cousin John the Baptist Elijah. Well, Elijah's the one who gets delivered the covenant of sin forgiveness. You look to David for the covenant of friendship, uh, but of course, I'm both, so they come from me. <laughs> they have not been delivered. <laughs> I need help publishing the books. That's how God wrote it. And he it actually says that these with these covenants, basically, I have to reread it. Don't go into effect until the books are published, which gives the and it has to be a big publisher who can send these books all over the world to give every Jew a chance to read it, to understand God is here. You know, the many, the witnesses become a multitude. My spoil. My portion is the many. And the multitude, uh, it said, we're going to get to it in just a second, is uh, the sport for going through what I've gone through. The new covenant has already arrived, and all of the inequities of sins of the Jewish people are forgiven. And, the, and God remembers them no more. The guilt, which is an emotion, is from not following the laws and teachings of God by the Jewish people. God's forgiveness of the sins in and of itself removes the guilt. If they believe, if they listen to the teacher, it's here. This is real. So get your Bible. Turn to Jeremiah 31. Let me show you to you. Let me show you exactly what I'm doing on this tape. You know, this is on 52. This is on the description of the righteous servant. And, of course, that's me. Uh, definitely match 5310. Christmas disease, he did give me a long life. And, again, the covenant, making any righteous. Well, everybody's going to be righteous for a day or two. But when are they going to start sinning again? Now, if they don't hear about me and I tell them, look, this is real, you need to get to synagogue. And if you want to be have a special heaven, you need to start really studying. It's a great plan by God. No, it's no millennial era that a man made up, Mr. Ram Man. He just makes stuff up. This is, it's basically his wishes. This is how the world would be, and I'd be happy. He would be happy. The world is just a worship God. The entirety of the world. Everybody else will disavow their gods and come worship the God of Israel. There shall be no pain. The world shall be at peace. Typical religious person, right? I mean, leader. And I'm passing the, the basket around right now for donations, food, money, whatever you got. And it sounds wonderful, y'all. Oh, the world building us. I can sleep in the house that I built. Nobody's going to throw me out. I can eat the crops that I grow. That's actually in the Hebrew Bible. And I got it in here somewhere. God talks about that. That was heaven for them. That was their Messianic era. They built their house. They won't stay in it. People come take it. This was antiquity. Grow your food. They come and take that too. Hey, look, he's got food. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. It's like some old Western movie or something. The test of devotion is revealed here with Jeremiah 31 providing when God is coming with the new covenant, the time to come. The land blooms again, ruined cities restored, Jerusalem rebuilt. That is manifested in Malachi 3 by the angel of the covenant. Where's the covenant? God just made a new covenant with this land blooms, everything's rebuilt. I don't know. Who do you think's got it? I bet 
is described in Isaiah 53. Oh, you mean it's all of the Jewish people as one man, Israel? Uh, no, that doesn't seem to fit for me. I think he needs a prophet like Moses, and I don't think I don't think Israel. You know, all the Jews together. You ought to see it. You must see how ridiculous this teaching is. And I don't know why they did. Why do they just keep saying we're waiting on Moshe and he'll be describing 53 like they did in the Talmud. They called him the leper skull. Because he makes them any righteous by his knowledge. But he's afflicted by God. This figure. I know they're talking about leprosy. But that is a disease you can see and verify. Okay? But you can also verify disfigurement, blindness, death, Lame, crippled, etc., etc. Um, they just, that's just, I mean, you're not going to use all those words to describe the scholar. I am a scholar. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not an intellectual and this and that. I mean, I had to study hard. Uh, I'm good at reading and comprehension. I understand what I'm reading. But retaining it is my problem. Forgetfulness. That's um, why I love multiple choice questions. It kind of popped into my head, that one. I love it. That's what college is these days. There's an essay still, but mostly multiple choice. And well, you can rule two of them out almost immediately. So now you're down to two. You got a 50 50 shot. But, okay. That is manifested Malachi 3 by the angel of the covenant. Behold, I am sending my messenger to clear the way before me. Okay, as God speaking, the messenger is Elijah. He's the messenger of the covenant. <laughs> covenant. Remember, he can talk to the angel. And the Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple suddenly. As for the angel of the covenant that you desire, he is already on his way. He's already coming. We were laughing about this last night. You know, God's within me. He's without me too. Okay, he fills this room. As does uh, the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. If I'm in a room and I'm going to give a speech, and it's filled with people, okay, including the witnesses or you or anybody watching this. You will be sitting in the presence of God himself. I mean, absolutely within his presence, not just in front of him. His presence is going to surround your body head to toe. The difference with me, and when God says, that's a shekinah. out. I don't think anybody's ever really known for sure what the Shekinah is, although it appears in the Hebrew Bible when God enters, I believe, is it the first temple or second temple? I'm not sure either. Uh, on the east side, from the east gate. <clears throat> they could apparently see it. I don't know. It would have looked like a cloud, if anything. Um, it flows through me. It doesn't surround me. I become part of the Shekinah. It flows through me. My 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 spirit is blended with the spirit and God's and God's presence. That's how special. This is what He's done for. And of course, you, you, you know, nobody knew this. Nobody knew that every prophet. If you talk to God, you're experiencing everything I'm going with. This is all new. And I even heard some people say, "Well, no, Moshe is going to come up and He's going to open up the Torah to us." Well, that can't be done. They've nitpicked that thing to death. But I'm opening the book of the prophets to everybody. If they're, writing, if they're conversing with God to write his words or write his words as though he's saying them to the Jewish people, they're man divine beings, which, as I have said from the book of Joshua, the captain of the Lord's host, who is a Gentile and a harbinger of myself, a righteous servant Moshe, uh, he's asked by Joshua, 
uh, are you one of us, Israelite, or are you of the enemy? And he says, no, I am captain of the Lord's host. Now I have come. That's why he's a harbinger. I guess Omen might even be it. Of, but because we never see him again. Now I've come. And you, you can't find him again. He's gone. Who did you come for? You know. But anyway, in those three verses, you can identify. And I've already read through it it's in other videos. And of course, it's in the book. But you know that the captain is a man of divine beings. And he's captain uh, who is the host of the Lord's host. So a man of divine beings is a host. And I've gone over that too. There are only two covenants. Okay. Following God's testimony. Behold, I'm sending my messenger. One God, in brackets, of Israel. One angel of his presence in the new covenant. And one man, the messenger of the new covenant. This is God's words. A man in divine beings. A host of the Lord's host. That's God's words. There are only two covenants that have not been delivered. The new covenant for a time to come in Jeremiah with sin and forgiveness. And the covenant of friendship. The covenant of friendship basically comes with the shepherd, servant, and anointed one of God whom he calls David. The angel of the covenant must be the angel of the new covenant. The phrase, he is already coming, he's already on his way, means he arrives before God who comes to covenant with a Gentile, that's me, before he returns to his temple. He must have visible representation to speak and write his words as Moses did to have his temple rebuilt for his return of the Lord. Oh, and he says, I will return suddenly. He knows it's not here. Because the covenant of friendship says, I will place my temple amongst you. And of course, he has to get me ready. It's just the way it reads. Uh, but I told him, I said, well, you're within me. Where you are, where I am, you are. You know, uh, what we'll do for the suddenly we have a microphone on the third temple talking to the great crowd who will gather to see God enter it because they'll see me and they say, okay, God's inside this guy. Where he goes, God goes. 24-7, every, every second of the month, uh, day, every day. And until I die, he says, I told him, I said, well, why don't I run into the temple instead of just walking in? He just laughed. I said, I think it's a good idea. I could read it. I said, and God says, I will return to my temple suddenly. Well, he's within me, audience, or something like that. God says, I can make it a lot better than that. And then turn around and just run in, suddenly. I don't know why he put suddenly in there. He just said, I'll return to my temple. He had his reason. No, it was for this video of making y'all laugh. It could be. Remember, one, two, three purposes. He knows everything. God has to speak to the man to tell him that he he had to teach me all this. That he it was he that afflicted him with disease and crushed his life and took his right breast and withered his arm. It must be a life threatening disease, for God tells him that he might receive long life after choosing to crush him with the disease. And in verse 12, he is exposed to death. God also has to prepare him to be a prophet. That would be me. As he did Ezekiel. In the fire refinement in the hand of God by his words and power while teaching him the scripture to make the many righteous by his knowledge and remove their guilt. God is not asking the man to give up his life as a sacrifice. That would be against his teachings to the Israelites through his prophet, not to sacrifice their children. And the purpose of the man offering himself for guilt is to receive long life, not be sacrificed. How, how do Christians read this and, and, and convince themselves Jesus is 53? It's, it's, it's amazing. 
it, it boggles my mind. I'm like, who are these religious people? Remember, I was an atheist for 50 years. Didn't have anything to do with it. And then knew nothing about it and didn't want to. And I'm just... I can't believe this. You know, I read these writings and I said, how, how come people don't get it? I've had 150,000 views of these writings. One or another, if not all by some. 150,000. I've got, in this month, I've got 900 people who had come back to my channel to read more. I, I watch more. I, I'll learn, you know, it's gonna take a little time, bear with me. I, you know, I became a lawyer. That, believe me, nobody believe. You're a lawyer, you, Keith? Didn't you fail high school? Didn't you get kicked out of high school or fail or something? Nobody thought I had any intelligence whatsoever. I found out if I try and I study hard, I can pass the test. I'm good enough. But I'm not, I'm not some brilliant person figuring out all these things that no sage or rabbi has ever had a clue of. Okay, so this Gentile atheist of 50 years suddenly becomes the smartest rabbi and sage and theologian of the Jewish people of all time. Now, is that possible, people? You know he's talking to me. <laughs> you know it. Because it's not possible. Even I know that. And I failed ninth grade. I couldn't get into the University of Texas A&M that my dad had gone to. I had to take four courses in the summer between high school and the start of the fall semester at Texas A&M and pass them with basically B and, and no Fs. I did get one D, but all my B's made up for it. That D was so close to being in there. It's calculus. Not, yeah, it's not my strong suit. Math, chemistry, astronomy, anything. I'm just good at comprehending what I read and say. That's all I need. God will take care of the rest. Yeah, yeah. He, he's just, trying to get along life, not be sacrificed. Or even Jesus believed he was going to get along life. Again, he's on the cross. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? He gets it. He's about to die. He's about to release his ghost, as he says, to God. He's about to give up. I was in an ambulance for eight hours with, you know, bleeding now, And, uh, I had to keep myself awake. There was attendants back there. I didn't stop talking to them. Uh, I, I was just getting too weak. I, I just knew if I fell asleep, that was it. I wasn't coming back. You know, I tried. Here he is. And I released my ghost to Father, Father, why are you forsaking me? Because he knows now he's going to die. He knows he's not the man of 53. Because he's exposed to death and gets a long life. Somebody will say, well, it says mine. Well, it does. But that was just for me to scare me in the testament of devotion. Yeah. The reality is there is no guilt of sin for the man to bear. There shouldn't be. Because all sin has been forgiven when I'm here, when my books are published. The new covenant with sin forgiveness of all the Jewish people on earth has arrived. Before the offering is made, it had arrived, but I still hadn't given it that. And no, well, John the Baptist is his cousin. And I told you, he says John the Baptist is Elijah. He quotes that same verse from God, except he leaves out the angel of the covenant. He just has in there, I see my messenger before me, and I will return to my temple. Well, God's in his temple at the time, people. Okay? He doesn't have to return to anything. None of it makes sense. The whole story of Jesus is a myth. It's just a story. And there's different versions of it. They just didn't get canonized. The wrath upon them. You see how they... If you tell them who I am and they come to listen to me, I'm just going to leave with burning ears. 
<laughs> and you're going to go say, that's it. I'm going to build another cruc I'm going to build a cross and crucify that guy. <laughs> and the Muslims are going to be saying, what? Muhammad was the last messenger and prophet of God. And they say, well, that's not what the Jews say. They <laughs> say, so he's here today. And he's in the Hebrew Bible. That's it. Jihad. Anybody see this guy killing? <laughs> yeah. Cut his head off. That's fine. I say, bring it, Muslims. Bring it, Christians. Why? Because God's with me. I figure he needs me as his representation. He's not going to let them take me down. And I need a fast motorcycle. I'm going to be too old to ride a motorcycle, it looks like. I don't know we're ever going to get there. Which really is bad. I mean, come on, Jewish people. Don't you want the Christians, you know, to say, listen, forget Toby of Sam, Jew from Judea. It's not Israel. We've been waiting for Moshe at the time that tells us he's describing 53. Well, guess what? He's here. And he fits the verses. And we, he, he, he has an Isaiah 53 commentary that just shows primarily why Jesus doesn't fit anything, much less 53.10. By the way, you can't, he does have an abode in the New Testament. He eats at his house with some friends one time. Somebody want to describe that for me? I bet you can't. <laughs> when I get my abode, and I will, because God's with me, which means Emmanuel, well, that's God with us. Everybody's going to take pictures of it with their phones. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's where he lives. We're supposed to honor it. Well, I think that means just accept it. And of course, God's in there, so you know, maybe you do honor it. Because God's living in there with, that, <laughs> with the righteous servant Moshe, whose name is Keith. Keith. Well, he calls David, the Moshe, my servant David, a shepherd, a teacher. I'm his servant, a shepherd that he calls Keith, yeah. who is also David. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to cut some stuff out. We talked about this last night, I know. Uh, all this has been covered is what it is. The primary purpose of verse 10 is not for the test of devotion. It is to make certain that the animal, sacrificial, atonement, worship laws of the Torah cannot be used for the man described. That's why he crushed me with disease. I became blemished. The man described is blemished. He's crushed with disease. He's given an illness that exposes him to death, depending on how you translate. Yeah. Afflicted by God. This figure can't use that animal. It's not, yeah. And Jesus is known as, as being perfect. Perfectly good looking. Perfect in body. Never ill. Had one day of pain. One day. I had a day in the end, there was a bullet hole through my head, and I, I didn't give up the ghost. This is one day, have you seen the list of my accidents? And that's not everything. I got 20 surgical scars. And some of them are real minor. I even stitched up one myself one time with the help of a doctor. Well, he put an overcame into it. I just wanted to do it. But, um, It's the only reason God would crush a man with disease, to make him be his servant. You cannot offer an animal with defect. Jesus can't be 53. An animal that is blemished. So, God blemishes the man. Now, no man would refuse God, and God does not need a man's permission to make him a servant. He is God. In the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel, God just sees him. Put him into the, he just started tearing him up, pinning him to the ground. Told, told, he 